Hello developers welcome to Tapascript the youtube channel where you learn concepts before syntaxes all right react server component we are going to explore it together in this video this is a buzzword now going on in the web and the react development world but before we get started a few things about this video this is the slightly longer one because we will be unfolding a lot of underlying concepts so have patience with it but i will try to teach you in a way so that it is very simple and with something that everybody can understand so no worries there won't be any heavy things on you go slow but understand the concepts very well second thing this is a beginner friendly video so it means if you're beginner to react or beginner to react server components doesn't matter this video is for you so you can go ahead start taking it relaxly understand the things and if you have any doubts you can always you know that you can ask back in the comment section i'll respond back third is next js especially next js latest version is depending on react server components in a heavy way so if you have planned to learn nextjs or want to start with nextjs this video is going to give a lot of insights and help you get started with nextjs quite easily so remember these points this will be helpful while you are taking this particular video and before i get started as usual if you have not subscribed to my channel go ahead and subscribe react server components are like how i do cooking at my home why so because in most of the cases what happen is like if i want to cook a dish everything about that dish will be marinated prepared and kept ready for me so that i just come put them in and do some seasoning just stir something and then say that okay i have cooked everything or, or i have done everything but the heavy work that was done before so react server components are almost like that where the heavy thing has been done for you right at the background for you to take an advantage of it and do some kind of things on top of it using your client components and make your entire app much much better so you want to understand you want to make this analogy connect to react server components let's get start so react server components made easy in this video we will see two parts one part where we'll go through the entire concepts and then we'll be seeing a demo after going through the entire concepts once you start seeing the demo you will understand things even better okay so i will really really request you to go through the concepts well spend some time and then only start going through the demo all right so let us first start it with react okay i am not going to teach you like react from the beginning again but a few fundamentals of react is good to kind of go through so that we can set the context correctly what is react react we all know as a traditional ui library no doubt about that why exactly it exists it exists basically we had a big monolithic component and we want to kind of break into multiple components so that we enhance in terms of reusability the component architecture comes into picture one component can talk to another component and the component we can share across we can get lot of usability reusability facts into picture that's what react is known for that's what react gives us as a component based ui library and do you know like how these components talk to each other these components talk to each other using something called props because at times a component need to talk to each other each other they have to pass information with one to another so they talk to each other using props also there is another way using context that they can actually share information with each other and along with that the component also has something very private to itself which we call state so here the blue dots which are like state and those orange or red whatever color dots that a component passed from another is nothing but the data the props that it passed to each other now this is good this is a component architecture of react js is the time right now is a time to look into the patterns a bit differently we are going to talk about react server components so it means that we have to really think through where server components fits really well when we are talking about this component architecture or the component hierarchy all right so why we have to look into this pattern differently because we care about three things we care about user experience of course we are doing things for someone that someone is our customer that someone is somebody who is paying us for doing stuff so user experience is definitely a thing that we care for the second thing we care for maintainability like you write a code and you want your code developer or the person who will be taking it up tomorrow or in future they will really really won't be very angry with you with the kind of code or kind of design that you have done they will appreciate you the way that you have managed and maintained your code 
Also, even it is for you to debug something tomorrow or find out something is very easier if your code is maintainable. And the third and most important thing is cost. Because everything at the end of the day is depending on this particular factor. The cost is about uh, what kind of load you are putting on your application. Is your application going very heavy because it downloads too many client components on the browser? And because of, because of that, things become sluggish, things become slow on your browser. So as we care about all these things, that's the reason we have to look into the pattern a little bit differently. The component architecture that we have seen right now, we have to look into it differently. And that's why React Server Components fits very well. First, we'll talk about user experience. Okay. Then we'll talk about maintainability. And the last, we'll talk about cost. Now, as we talk about user experience, as we talk about maintainability and cost, I'm going to provide you a few examples the way that you usually write React code today. And with that, what kind of user experience problem, what kind of maintainability problem, or what kind of cost problem that we have with that, that's what we're going to explain. So first, the user experience problem. This kind of code, if you're a React.js developer, you have worked with React.js for a while right now, uh, you know this kind of code already. You definitely write or you would have written this kind of code already. If you are new to React, this is something like I can explain like the course wrapper is a parent component. Inside course wrapper, there are two child components. One is course list, another is testimonials. Okay, it's very simple. So this means there is a wrapper component. Inside that there is a course list component and there is a testimonials component. Imagine is a website where you have a bunch of course listed out and below that people have given a lot of good feedback and the testimonials about each of the courses that they have taken. Now I assume that the course list component make a server call. It actually send a request to the server, fetch all the courses and then render on the UI. So a very straightforward component that we usually write that's a course list. Similarly, the testimonials is another component that makes a request to the server fetch all the testimonials on the UI and then it renders all the testimonials over there. It's, it's very simple, very usual thing that you usually do. Now, as we make this kind of request response thing, as we make the calls, get the data, you know how the network calls happen, right? There is no guarantee like how much time, how soon or how late each of these responses will come back to the client. It depends on the latency it depends on like how kind of what kind of uh, speed that you need that your network is having what kind of computations that you are doing on the api layer or in the database layer it depends on various different factors now based on that factor let's assume that the fetch call for testimonials happened much faster it got the result back much faster than the course list call okay now i'll show you a basic animation through which i'll tell you like what kind of user experience problem it might happen on those cases. So consider this one as a course wrapper, the wrapper component, and inside that you have course list and testimonials, but testimonials call happen much faster. The result got back much faster. So testimonial came back, but after a while, the course list came back and it came back with the data. So, but course list is at the top of testimonials. So what is going to do is going to push down testimonials and fit himself over there. As it is fitting itself over there, is it a good experience? No, because you have a layout shift. Your layout gets shifted a bit and that experience is not so good. How do we tackle this? We tackle this in a way like we give some kind of shimmer effect or some kind of loading effect on, on those cases. But we keep our users waiting even in those cases that okay, something, a part of it is done, but the part of it is kind of still coming, right? So that user experience is what we are talking about. Hope this is clear. Now let's talk about another kind of user experience problem same kind of code you check take here the same kind of code you have a wrapper and then you have a course list and then you have a testimonials course wrapper is a parent component course list and the testimonials are the child component but i have made a little bit of changes over here instead of course list and testimonials they make their call and get the data from server now course wrapper also make the call Post wrapper also goes to the server, make a fetch wrapper info, and with that information, it does certain things. Let's assume that it does certain things, right? Mm -hmm. The course wrapper also makes a server call. Similarly, course list, as we discussed before, course list is fetches all the courses from the backend, 
uh, it fetches each of the courses name description cover from the back end and it will kind of render the things on on the browser similarly testimonials also does the same thing now both parent and ch ch children are making the server call and trying to render things what kind of problem might happen what do you think so one problem can definitely happen is that until the parent components the core server components fetch call completes until it gets the response back none of the children will render even if the course list or the testimonial had got back the results long back but because course wrapper is taking longer time because of that it is not going to render course list and the testimonials components altogether which is a problem which is a bad user experience okay so course wrapper call will go the call hang forever in the meantime testimonials should have come course list should have come but still they are not rendered because course wrapper has not got his result back the network call has not been completed the component itself has not rendered you know on the browser so this is definitely a user experience and this particular paradigm where the parent is still waiting to render but you know child is very ready to render this phenomenon has a name do you know what is the name this is what the name waterfall so this is called network waterfall or the component waterfall in the network waterfall is like the second request or the subsequent request always wait for the previous request to complete and and then only the next one is get initiated in this case exactly same thing happening the course wrapper gets complete and after that only course list and testimonials comes into picture so this is definitely a big user experience problem when you know your, your user is using the application okay i hope it is quite clear now we'll go to our second problem which is like maintainability what exactly maintainability means we dis we explain that like maintainability means like you have you yourself or someone else in the team should be able to maintain the code really well but let's take an example of bad maintainability now the same example again you have a course wrapper then you have course list you have testimonials okay but instead of course wrapper course list and testimonials making their individual api call now if you have seen like i have taken the api call at the top right now i am making one api call fetching all the details passing the individual the relevant details as a props to course wrapper course list and testimonials so it means that i am making only one network call now there is no multiple network call i am getting all the details and then passing the individual components their own information this is this this solve the problem that we have seen last time the waterfall problem is not there anymore but it may introduce one more problem what is that particular problem so again we have course wrapper inside that we have course list and testimonial now let's say that tomorrow you decide that you don't want the testimonial component again in your application you just want to drop it off so testimonial goes off okay but one problem remains right the testimonial was depending on info dot testimonials data that was coming from fetch all details what if you forgot to remove the testimonial part of the api implementation from the back end so it means though your application is not using testimonials at all but somewhere in your application at the api layer or the back end layer still you have the details about the testimonials which is like very unnecessary tomorrow somebody might wonder like why do you have that so this is a maintainability problem that we are talking about like fetch all details still have the testimonial related details but the testimonial component is completely out of picture out of scope for your application okay so that's a maintainability problem that you're talking about so so far if you understood the problem that we spoke like the user experience problem maintainability problem these are the things that we are already living with these are the things that react js developers are already writing their code with right so these problems are not new but we have a solution today we have something called react server components we'll be talking about it shortly after talking about all this problem so it is very important for us to understand the problem first then understand the solution so that we will understand like why we are talking about a particular solution or topic altogether otherwise it will be just like you know mugging it up and uh, not even acknowledging the true potential of the things that we are learning okay now the last part is cost i'm going to show you a picture i want to like like know like who else can relate to it and if you can relate to it post a comment that you really relate to it so you would have seen this picture over internet i just copy pasted from from internet 
what exactly it means it means the bulky javascript so i love javascript javascript is something give me uh, bread and butter but we all have to accept the fact like the amount of javascript gets downloaded on the browser on the client side even with the modern javascript frameworks is humongous even when there are amount of code splitting dynamic imports and all these things are there still we download a bunch of components bunch of node modules bunch of libraries on the browser and make browser really really heavy now for a hobby project for a side hustles it may not be very heavy things but if you are really working on a project which your enterprise customers or your some users are using for them it really matters for a for a retail application a lag of one second matters a lot so in that case if you are making your browser so heavy and you're bringing any kind of sluggishness it's going to end up again in a bad user experience and the user might leave that application and it might cost us a lot so it is not only the cost that we are getting in terms of memory on the browser it might cost us back at the end from the end user as well so all these three factors are known now now it's time to understand the client server thing because we're talking about what we are talking about react server components we understood all about this client infrastructure with react js now it's time that we understand a little bit about client server now this is consider this like you know 56000 feet above very high level picture a client server thing there are a lot more things happen underneath but I want to give you a picture about what client versus what server that's the whole objective over here so what is client clients are nothing where but where like uh, we usually use our application right for example our handle devices like mobile tab or our laptop pc whatever it is right on the client side we have our ui we have our ux everything is going on and there is a server sometime it locates on the cloud or maybe on the physical machine where you have your data you have a database data store and things like that from client you make a request usually to use the server and one server have the data once process the data it sends you back the response so this is what basically a client server model now i thought of touch base this client server model with you only reason because when you talk about react server components i will be using client and server these terms again and again so please put it in your mind put it in your brain like what exactly client what exactly server what is request what is response you know at a very high level i hope that is clear so now what we'll do is we will understand how this client components the react traditionally as a ui library client components ui library how it works when it comes for the client and server interaction okay so let's take this example our old example in this example again course wrapper course list testimonials each of these component makes an api call get the response and render their component so for the example sake let's consider that we have a course wrapper this is a course wrapper as a parent component and inside that there is a course list a child component okay so we are good with that and there is a server somewhere maybe on the cloud where we have the data store or the database which is having you know data related to course list and data related to the course wrapper testimonials but for this particular example we only bother about the course wrapper related data and the course re list related data so what happened the first our the first thing that happened is basically it will initiate those requests to fetch the data right so initiate the request the request goes the course wrapper request goes because course list is not there yet because it's a child component of course course wrapper has to complete his execution his data fetching its rendering then only course list comes into picture right because it's a child component so the request goes and the response comes back after a while and course wrapper component appears the moment it appears it renders the request goes for course list course list come back and we see course list also in the ui fantastic so it works but what we have seen there is a latency there is a lag there is a delay by the time course list component come into your ui it has to wait for course wrapper to finish his call render and then only the course list come into picture we have seen this in this example the client components architecture of react this is how things work today now what we're going to do we are going to see the same example but with the context of react server components this is where let me introduce you the react server components and try to understand like what kind of problem it solves in this particular examples we have talked about waterfall right so waterfall means it is high latency 
the latency with which the delay is more 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 between client and server so the server components in the server components same thing we have a client and we have those two course wrapper and the course list a parent and the child component and we have a server of course so with react server components the concept over here okay it might sounds a little bit odd but the concept is very 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 simple way put what if the components moved from client to server so we move the course wrapper component from the client to server we also move the other component child component from the client to the server so it means that what we are saying okay from client component fetching the details from the server was introducing a lag was introducing a high latency so now let us co locate these components with server so it means if they are co locate if they are actually residing nearby what happen is like it is very very easier for them to fetch the details from the server itself because they are co co located so there is very less amount of latency this is what we are talking about right so let's see how these things happen now client actually request this thing right request for data of course but my component is already located at the server side so it is very near to the data store it is very near to the database so it means the request that i have made to get this particular component on the client what happen is basically the component never gets downloaded on the client itself rather what happen it fetches the data from this co location fetches the data from the co location and when the response comes back both the components comes back the entire part of the component entire skeleton part of the components comes back for you and this is much much faster than the way that we have seen the client component interaction in the client component interaction when the wrapper was making the call the child component has to wait until wrapper finishes his call and come back with his rendering and then the child thing gets started but with the react server component concepts both the components are already residing all already co located to the server so they can actually fetch their details without making a call over the wire they actually can make themselves fulfill with all the data required for them to render and then the finally the component output comes to the client side react parses that and show it for you together so there is no lag at all there is no lag that we have seen previously so this is where the server component is pretty useful and this is the very very fundamental thing that you have to understand with this visual i hope it is clear so we'll move on now let's see the another side of it now we'll see like how the component hierarchy is managed or maintained for the server components so we know like there is something called server components so we know like what it does but we know like in react the components are hierarchical so it means there will be a root component and there will be other child component and root component from the top down it will pass the data using props or it will share the information using context and that's how the child gets this information we know that so let's talk about this thing so we have uh, some kind of marker here the blue dots are client component and the green dots are like server components and if you're working with react you probably know this already so this is a component hierarchy you have the root component and the child component and as it goes there is a leaf component how the data get passed it get passed from the top down from the root towards the down it get passed right now with server components the inclusion of server components what we say that some components in this hierarchy can be server component okay some components can resides near the server some components can be as usual like your regular traditional comp react components we call them client component today can be client components but how do we decide that what are the deterministic factor based on which we can decide what what should go as a server component versus what should reside as a client component okay the deciding factor is as the components residing in the server they near the near to your data store and server for faster data processing for giving you the component much much faster they lack in few things what are the things they lack in as the components residing in the server of course they don't have any access right being on the server or anything that happens on the browser so it means any of the browser events like click handler mouse move blur handler any kind of such handler are not going to work on your server components number 1 second thing is like if your components require any kind of state management or effect management for example 
the hooks like use state you know use reducer or use effect if you want to use you cannot use them in the server component of course because the server components are not available on your browser at all so when your components just need the data and need data faster need that data faster your components load faster with the data but don't need any kind of user interaction don't need any kind of state management don't need any kind of effect management go for server component but if your components need user interaction like click like mouse movement any kind of user interaction or a state management or an effect management you want to go for a client component now you might want to ask like in most of the react components that you would have written your effect managements were were for mostly about fetching the things from the database and get the get the things from the api then do you really need use effect anymore in my opinion you may not use need use effect at all because if your usage of use effect is to fetch the data the server component is exactly doing that instead of using use effect in the client side and again being responsible for downloading that component in the client side rather write a server component which will never get downloaded in the client side which will fetch the data directly and give you the entire component representation for rendering we will see that in a demo in a while so this is the thumb rule that we have discussed so far okay another th thing that you can keep in mind when you actually de design or architect your application you try to make if you want to use server component try to make server component at the root instead of client component and as much as possible push the cl client component towards leaf why because at the server component level you can start fetching the data you can make your component ready and kind of all the interactions all the state management you can keep it in the client component and just make it at make them at the leaf level for managing right we are going to see that also with the example when we show, show the demo so now the question is can you use server components for everything in the entire application only with server components uh, the answer is yes only if your apps do not need any kind of interactivity only when you don't need any kind of uh, say click handler mouse handler or anything like that you can use server components only on your application if you don't want uh, to use hooks like use state or manage any kind of effects so if that's the case of course you can go also you can use server components only if your apps do not depend on browser apis because server components exist on server they are not get downloaded on client so it means any of the client apis like local storage bluetooth api usb api things like that you won't be able to have the access to so it means that in a real application you won't be using only server components you also will use client components it's a mix and match so you will put it in a way like wherever your user interactivity not there state management not there or you don't have to really uh, interact with your web apis browser web apis you will be you will be considered them as a server components and wherever those things happen like you need interactiveness and things like that you will be considered as a client component so when you getting started with the application designing or the architecture itself you have to keep in mind like how are you going to segregate these pieces how are you going to design these pieces such a way so that you separate out your server components from the client components altogether and try to make as much as server components possible because you are going to cut down the, the amount of latency you are going to make your application much much faster why do you want to lose out so many advantages that you have with server components now as you cannot live without user interaction and things like that you have to use client components so wherever that is required use client components as well now i know what you are thinking enough of talking let's do some demo yes of course we are going to get to get into the demo but a few things about demo the demo i have prepared uh, i have used nextjs not react alone there is a reason the reason being uh, if you are following me um, on my channel or following my channel you know that i have created a video like what to learn next whether it's a react js or nextjs i firmly believed like what where, where you should focus on so please go ahead and watch that video nextjs is built on react js so to learn nextjs you have to have some understanding a great understanding of reactjs no doubt about that now reactjs official documentation itself talk about that if you want to get started with react today in 2023 
you better start with Next.js because it gives you the all batteries included or everything that you can get from a framework. Great. But you need to have all understanding of React concepts so that you can use Next.js effectively. So one of the vital React concept is React Server Components based on which the Next.js app router is written, which is Next.js latest stable release like 13.4 release. And that's a massive, massive rewriting possibly on Next.js and so, so, so much developer friendly. If you know, if you understand the concepts like React Server Components, the concept like server actions and things like that. So the demo that I'm going to show you is written on Next.js. But in this demo, we are not going to do any kind of deep dive into Next.js at all. I'll be creating Next.js videos right after this. As I told, this particular video, React Server Components is a prerequisite or precursor for that. That's the reason I've created this one. So don't expect any Next.js teaching in this demo. Rather, I'm going to teach you how React Server Components used, how do they look, how client components looked, how server and client components interact with each other in a demoable fashion. And I told that server components can reside on the server and can access your data store directly. What I'm going to show you that you, we can write the server component, regular React components on Next.js, which can access your MongoDB records directly in the component without any underlying APIs. So this is what we're going to see and how it interacts with client API. Interested? Let's get started with that. Demo time, friends. So what you see on screen um, is a visual editor for MongoDB. It's called MongoDB Compass. So I have MongoDB running locally. I have connected to that. And in that, I have a database called TapaScript. In that, I have a uh, already collection called Courses. And inside collection, I have few documents like, you know, uh, the first course, second course, th third course. So if you're coming from a relational DB background like PostgreSQL or any other, consider courses like a table. And each of these things are like rows, like, and each of the rows, this name, description, cover are the columns, right? So just consider them like that. So it means in my database, I have three courses and each of the courses have name, description, cover, rating, price, blah, 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 information. Okay. Very simple database, MongoDB database. Now let's go back to the UI that we have developed. Uh, UI looks very blur. The UI looks very, very naive. It doesn't look like, you know, it is like very fancy UI. And the reason for that is I want you to focus on React server component, not on any kind of styling or things like that, uh, that you know, will make this UI fancy. So I have disabled all the styles in the UI so that you focus on just understanding what server component is. So the, the three courses that I pulled from the database is the course one, course two, course three. All the courses are listed. So this is my course list component. And along with that, I also have one button called add course. Clicking on that one model comes up. In that model, you can actually start typing, you know, different things like you can course title, tell me more about the description, course link, cover image. And once you type and say add, the course gets added over here. So this is what the application is right now. And this is this much is enough to demonstrate um, the server component, the client component interactions. Okay, one more thing is there like once you click on one of the course, you get to see more details about the course. You get to see like a big description you are not seeing. There are some comments out there like, you know, it says great course and things like that, that you get to see. This application is cool. And by the way, I'm going to use the same application to teach you Mern. I'm going to use the same application to teach you a lot about Next.js, which is the videos are coming next. If you have not subscribed yet, time for you to subscribe. All right. So let's get back to code a little bit where we talk about the server components and all this nitty gritty. So the code is, this is an Next.js code um, using app router. Uh, again, I'm not getting into the Next.js right now, but let's talk about what is the, what is the file? What is that React code or the Next.js code that gives me the slash courses page? So that will be like um, inside slash courses, there will be a uh, page dot tsx file is you can see the courses header this is the courses header then you have add course component which gives me this button it doesn't look like a button but believe me it's a button and then there's a course list is a component which gives me each of these courses simple enough very simple straightforward reacting the thing is like what is interesting over here the interesting piece is once i go at the top interesting piece is i am making a database connection directly over here i'm getting a mongodb connection after getting the MongoDB connection, I'm getting into the courses collection, the courses table basically in the database. 
and I'm telling find me all the courses and retrieve the name cover and rating information for the courses those column and give me these details now think about react application before react server components you would have done this by writing an express api you expose those apis from the client side you will have a use effect hook then you have the use state to state management from use effect you will make a fetch call you will retrieve these all courses put that into your use state and use that state inside this JSX, isn't it? W wasn't it too much work, guys? That's what you used to do. Now with React Server component, what happened? As this component is located near the server, it has the access, it's co-located to database, it's co-located to data store, co-located to server. It has the access to your data store directly. It means that you can use all your backend related packages and NPM directly over here and can actually make use of those things to do all kind of things that you used to do in the API layer. You cut down your API layer completely. You're basically using all your server side stuff within this particular component itself, which is very much a React component in Next.js. Now I'll take a pause and tell you one fact. In Next.js, the latest version of Next.js, everything by default is server component. Every component that you create in Next.js by default is server component. That means every component that you create in Next.js, you can use these queries directly. Or if you want, you can also create something like a route inside this API folder. Once we get into the Next.js videos, we'll understand it more. We need some kind of interaction, right? When you click on this at course, I am seeing there is a model coming. So this means there is a user, user interaction, a human interaction is required. And we say, we say that when we learn the theory, like whenever there is a user interaction required, what you need, you need to have a client component. So in the server component, you cannot create any kind of handler. So now you would have guessed already this at course, this particular component is a client component because it has certain kind of click handlers inside it. Now I told in Next.js by default, everything is server component. So if you want to use something called a client component, you have to explicitly tell that this is a client component using this directive called use client. So you use this directive at the top of the page before the import and says that, hey, this is a client component. If you don't use use client by default, it is a server component. It is known there is a server component. And if you see this component, this is where I have this button and I have this on click handler and through that I'm showing this model. Good enough. So this is my client component and the previous one, whatever I have seen is my server component. So we now know a server component can actually import a client component and render the co client component over here. This is very evident, but, but a client component cannot import a server component and render it. Why? Because server components exist where? In the server side, you cannot render them on the client side, but you can import a server component in a client component and pass the server component output as a props. That you can do, but you cannot use them as a child, right? So for example, inside at course, which is a client component, I cannot import another server component and use it, you know, between the mode button and model over here. However, I can import a server component in this client component and pass, the, pass that server component as a children to another client component as a props. This is the, this is the rule if you keep in mind, I think now things are pretty simple for you. Now, one more thing with this example that I'm going to show you, this is where things get much more interesting. So you would have seen like uh, the, this page.tsx is definitely a server component, at course is a client component. Again, if I go inside course list for a moment, the course list doesn't have that use client tag. So it's, a, it's a, again a server component. It doesn't have any kind of interaction. So that's the reason I thought this is a perfect example for a server component so it is a server component so we know like something is server component something is client component now if i go press f12 i go to inspect mode go to sources and go to webpack internals go to app client and expand and what do you see let's expand the components script src app courses components what do you see do we see all these components got downloaded on the browser do you see all these components you don't see what do you see? You see at course.tsx, at course form.tsx, and model.tsx. Only these components. Why? 
because these are the only three components I marked as client component. If I go to add course component over here, I marked it at marked it at use client. So these are the components basically are client component and rest of the components are server component. That's the reason the server components have never got downloaded on the browser. Only client components got downloaded on the browser. So this is a huge, huge benefit even from the cost perspective that you are not downloading. Similarly, uh, if you have to access file system, you might be knowing an, about an NPM called FS. Now you can use FS directly in a Next.js component, server component. And that FS will never be downloaded over here when you node modules because it happens in the server side altogether. You are not downloading those node modules on your client side at all, which is like great stuff, right? So I hope this, this small demo helps you to identify what is server component, what is client component, when client components required, what is server components advantage and everything. And again, to repeat, I am not teaching you Next.js here. I'm just giving you a glimpse of what server components, what client components look, look like. Hope it was clear to you now. After the demo, let's recap what we learned before we end. We learned that backend access without any round trip is possible with React server components. You don't need any round trip, no latency for doing any kind of backend access. You access them directly on your component. Great. No waterfalls. We learn about waterfalls. Your child rendering is not waiting until the parent rendering is taking place, right? So this is, this is not happening for server components. Automatic code splitting and zero bundle size. So anything you put in the server components, they never ever get downloaded on the client side. In the example we have seen, the bunch of components we have created in our app, they never come you know, in, on the client side. So zero bundle size for server components. Of course, server components has to get some limitations because they are lying on the server, not on the client. They cannot do things which client components can do like event handlers, client state and effect things. And then you have to remember this rule that a React server component can import and render a client component. But the reverse is not true that a client component can import, but it cannot render a server component as it is. If it has to use a server component inside a client component, you have to pass the React server component as props to client components. Okay, so this is the rule. Of course, because server component stays on server, you cannot render them on the client side. Uh, and the last one, use client component as much as possible in the leaf level and the server component as a root level so that you gave it and fetch your data and you can actually architect in your application in such a way that all your event handlings and everything happen in the client component and that stays in the leaf level. I hope it is very clear with the recap. Now you can stitch everything. You can connect all the dots so far that we, we have come across. So it was a long video, isn't it? I'm sure it was, but it was resourceful as well. So if you have gone through this video and there are a few things that you haven't understood, please go over it again. And then start reading about other tutorials, reading about, you know, from react.dev, reading about it from Next.js or any other tutorials. You will understand and you will grasp things much, much well. And if you have any further questions, the certain things that you are curious about, feel free to put a comment in the comment section. I will definitely, definitely respond back to you. So with that, I hope that you have now enough details to start looking into Next.js app router, Next.js architecture, and start understanding like how are you going to start using the latest and greatest Next.js. It's all depending on React server components, and React Server Components is a very, very essential factor for you to learn next year. With that, this video comes to an end. And as usual, I would like to request you to subscribe to my channel if you have not done. You can also join me as a member on my YouTube channel to get a lot of background videos on member-only call, member-only chat kind of services. So look out for that. I'll be seeing you very soon with another video. Thank you.